Hi everyone, this is Middle Ages Gaming and I hope you're all doing okay. This channel is about finding the fun in today's mostly cynical gaming environment in new or older titles and this is one I can add to the list of worthy of your time. Of the three Troika Games titles, Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura was the most successful at release in 2001, going on to sell 234,000 units. The other famous game, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines, only really became popular after digital sales platforms like Steam revived this classic and is perhaps the most well known of their games. Arcanum is a steampunk fantasy RPG and this mix of industrial technology and magic creates an alluring world. These facets are diametrically opposed to each other and coexist uncomfortably. You have to choose to specialize in one or the other. Magic seems to be more intuitive to master and I went for a magic user mixed with some melee abilities. As such you'll be told to sit far away from the steam engine when you book a passage by train. The story revolves around the interaction of the three major races of the world. Human, Dwarf and Elves. The archetypal Elves being in harmony with nature and magic, Dwarves being technology specialists, and humans being able to exploit both for their own means. The overall theme works really well and it is in the exploitation of technology Greetings, by humans what is it because mean? of their drive to make an impact in their yeah, relatively short lives nice. without Thank a thought for the long-term consequences that rings true. The story is well told My and holds the game together till the end. Long. Character creation is pretty basic choosing your race, portrait, background, alignment with your build of choice in mind. Your race will of course have some NPC exchange significance. The beginning will test your resolve, you are seriously underpowered and every encounter is potentially lethal. This is all while learning the mechanics and unfamiliar interface and might be the reason why many people quit after a few hours in this unforgiving world. The game does not do a great job of teaching you mechanics and it's up to you to experiment or read up on some basics. After you have recruited a companion or two, Leveled up a bit by killing everything you see and build up some skills and learn a few exploits of course, like resting after each battle to fill your fatigue meter again, you can start enjoying the gameplay. Interestingly, you have no control over your companions. The best you can do is give them weapons and armor which they will automatically equip and let them do their thing. Virgil who you can recruit at the start and late in the game Raven and Alf saw me through most of the game because of their healing abilities. I only played with two companions throughout as you have to have enough points and charisma to recruit more than two but I did not find this necessary. They come with their alignments that will affect your actions in game but for the most part I did not care about my companions further than their extra hit points and buffs in combat. Although there is some story relevance to some of the characters. Experience points is mainly accrued by killing things and progressing the main story quests. The level cap is 50 and you will be close or have reached this level by endgame without having to do too many side quests. Spending your points carefully is important. They are used from upgrading stats, skills, health or fatigue, learning spells and you have to choose your specialities. For me it was intelligence, willpower and spells for magic use some charisma and persuasion skills for dialogue resolutions, dexterity and melee and dodge for weapon combat and I found perception and spot trap crucial to avoid the many hidden traps in certain areas. I did not explore the schematics for crafting, technology or herbology but there is a lot of replay value to experience a different set of skills and character builds. Combat is real time by default but can be changed to turn based which I preferred. You have your health bar and what is called fatigue, mana and most other games of the like, as your main survival indicators. Fatigue becomes the most important aspect to manage. Run out of this and you can't cast spells or take hits and will fall unconscious 
hoping that your companions will survive the encounter. This is where a balanced build between using mana and attacking with melee to conserve some fatigue is crucial. Mid battle you can lose your weapon which you need to pay attention to and pick up before you continue combat. Or suddenly find yourself naked when your armor is broken. This requires repairs which you can do yourself if you have spent points in the skill or at a blacksmith. You'll be doing a lot of traveling between hubs and this can require getting locations from NPCs or exploring. Some areas you can only reach by ship and you will eventually require your own ship as part of the main story questline. You can be interrupted while traveling and these random encounters can be challenging if you are not prepared. The areas are all varied and interesting enough for the most part. There are also a few challenging puzzles to solve and the pacing towards the end drags on a bit when I was ready to complete the game. There are also many ways to solve a quest to suit your abilities, from dialogue to combat or secret passages or subterfuge and you will not get locked out of completion. With my disintegrate spell stocked up on fatigue potions and Raven as my trusty companion, the final battle was a little underwhelming but the story peaked rewardingly. There are multiple endings depending on your choices during the course of the game. The game has a few bugs, my character just froze in some combat and saving often is essential. There are also some very difficult to detect exits and strange requirements to me to resolve some quests but as a whole the current state of the game is more than acceptable. My first playthrough took about 50 to 60 hours to completion. Arcanum needs to be experienced by any serious RPG fan and the legacy of Troika games is well worth reliving. This is a unique world waiting for you to discover. I hope this overview will be helpful for some of you. My aim is to find the fun in gaming with the little free time we all have. And hopefully this channel will help you decide which titles might be worthy of your time and give an idea how much time a title might require of you. I try to keep the overview short but with enough substance to help you make decisions. Feel free to share some of your gaming adventures in the comments below for me to explore. Until next time, stay safe and live free.